Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time between videos, it's just been a crazy time of year in the last quarter and I've just been busy back and coming back and forth and doing a few other things that I'll share with you later. But um, since it's now officially 2018, I thought I would record a video for you about my favourites from 2017. Just quickly, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe below and you'll get all my content up to date. It pings you in your inbox when I have a video up. Um, also check out my blog as well. I'll link all the details in the description box below. With that said, let's get right into it. I've got a lot of products to go through because there were a lot of favourites in 2017. Some were new for me, and they've been around for a while, but new for me from purchasing them. I only purchased them in 2017. And some are uh, brand new, as in just released for in 2017. As well as it covers bags, beauty, and a few little things in between as well. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I'm going to do is bags. Um, the first bag I want to talk about is this one here, which is the beautiful Lady Dior with this gorgeous, I don't know, I describe this as almost like a western strap, like guitar strap. Um, not all the bags come with this strap, so all the Lady Dior bags, it comes with like a thinner strap or in the small case, a very small chain, a thin chain strap. So this was awesome, this strap. And I know that Dior now sell these on its own and they're like 2,000 Australian dollars to get a strap. The fact that it came with this bag, I was like, amazing. As well as that, this is the soft, supple Lady Dior. So it's the new one under the um, leadership of, I think it's Maria Grazia, um, as the head designer of Dior. So it's a little bit more smooshy and a little bit more easier to fill up, I would describe it as. And it's got the new Dior hardware, so the Dior hardware was slightly different for the original Lady Dior. And it's just absolutely stunning in this navy blue colour. It's so dark, it almost looks black. And the entrance of it is the flap, which as you know, my biggest thing with my other Lady Dior, the original one, is getting in and out of the bag with that thin zipper. So this is awesome and you can actually stuff a fair bit in this bag. This is the medium size, I believe. I have a... Uh, I think it's the My Lady Dior as well, which is smaller than this, but not as small as the Mini. And I have an original large Lady Dior in paint and leather. So this just rounds off my Lady Dior collection. My favourite bag is the Lady Dior, and it's just getting better and better. I've seen new styles come out this season, which I'm eyeing off as well. But really, can I justify another Lady Dior? Probably not, but this is also a limited edition piece i believe for last season if it's not in store now you will probably won't see it again and what i love about christian dior is the service that they provide their customers so i have with all my dior products as long as i can produce a receipt i have a lifetime of free cleaning of my dior bags that's just unbelievable and almost unheard of in the luxury market for bags. Um, you can get them professionally cleaned by other companies, but the fact that Dior themselves said, bring your bag in and we'll clean it for you is brilliant. Um, this was purchased at the Chadston Boutique, and if you have a second to go down there and check out the Chadston Boutique, it's beautiful. It's got ready to wear shoes, all the bags, so I would really check out them, and the people that work there are super nice, and I have a relationship with some of the essays there. Um, and I will always go back to them if I want to purchase another Dior bag. So, yay, this is my favourite bag of 2017, let's be honest. There are a few others, but I think this tops the list, so I went with my favourite first for some reason. So that's my Lady Dior. And the other one I have that I'm super excited about is this absolutely gorgeous Balenciaga Bazaar Tote. This is in the size small. There is a smaller one, an extra small. It's really cute um, crossbody and all the bloggers are wearing it in the striped pattern. And I know that the, that smaller one with the stripes is a slightly different leather. This is calf leather, so a little bit more thick and sturdy. But I picked this one because I love the throwback to the monogramming again. And the fact that there's Balenciaga Paris all over it. And it's a really perfect size for me because I travel a lot, so I'm always on planes and needing more than just my basic stuff, so it fits my iPad Pro in it, and it could fit my MacBook Air in it as well, so 
I'm in love with this and what I heard was over time when you use it it'll start to soften and it'll lose this really boxy shape so I'm really looking forward to having it a worn in Balenciaga Bazaar tote and I must say when I first saw the striped ones I actually hated it I thought they were really ugly <laughs> but it grew on me when I saw bloggers styling it in very very cool ways and I think it's actually a very cool bag if you can get your hands on a Bazaar tote um, do so because they are a very cool bag I think they'll be in the in the blogger realm for years to come. I think it's very, very. I'm a blogger bag, and it's it's got this element of coolness to it. And what I also noticed was that they're bringing out more and more different styles with it. So they have the shearling one, which I think I've seen Khloe Kardashian wear, and it's it's awesome. I've touched it, and it's very, very soft. That one, but I just think that in my for my lifestyle, a shearling bag probably wouldn't work for me and I probably wouldn't reach for it whereas the plain black with the Balenciaga Paris all over it would so yeah I'm really happy with this and I cannot wait till it softens up a bit um, in the inside it's just got a pocket for some stuff and then it's got like a zipper pocket at the back it's pretty much an empty black hole for that so yeah this was purchased at the Balenciaga boutique in Chadston if you don't go to Chadston much do go it's changed a bit and it's got all these luxury stores, including probably the only Balenciaga store, as I understand it, in Australia. You can order for the website as well, but I think uh, Chaston have the only actual physical boutique for Balenciaga, and and the Wave as well. So those two stores, like I have never seen them anywhere in Australia. So it's worth just to catch those as well. So yeah, this is amazing. The other bag I want to mention is a bag that. I have loved and then I hated it and then I loved it again when I realized how practical it was and it is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs backpack. I loved it but then I saw a million people wearing it and I think I loved the mini version and then I realized how impractical that was for my lifestyle but then I tried on the PM size I believe this one is and I fell in love again. It's perfect. It fits a whole lot in it and deceivingly so. Um, can fit a fair bit in it, obviously not a laptop or a big iPad Pro, but I'm sure you could fit a smaller tablet in here, but it's just a great daily bag. It's great for just taking on your errands because it's hands free, and yeah, and I love holding it like this, or slinging it over one shoulder or wearing it as a traditional backpack, it's amazing. And because it's canvas, you just wipe it down when it gets a little bit... Uh, dirty or anything like that so yeah I'm in love with this and I didn't think I would love it as much until I started wearing it every day and using it because it is a backpack and backpacks are unbelievably useful um, when you're just going out and about in town so and because I'm in Bali I think this is perfect in that it's a designer backpack a designer bag and it's a backpack and it's not going to soil with dust or dirt because you just can wipe it off so yes this is a real winner for me and if you're thinking about it please go try it on in the PM size try to avoid the mini because I think that's been oversaturated in the market whereas this is an amazing an amazing bag okay last but not least is actually a new purchase I purchased it before the end of 2017 just but I received it today <laughs> so I can technically count it's a favorite of 2017 because I knew I would love it before I even actually got my hands on it. So this bag I've been wanting for ages and it's the J.W. Anderson Pierce bag. Ah, yeah, in the medium size. So mine's so brand new, it's all got its tags on and the return tag's still on. And mine is in this beautiful silver color. It's like stunning silver color to be honest. And I've been looking at this bag for ages and I've been seeing bloggers style it and I've been seeing other reviews of it and I knew I wanted it but I was just like what colour should I get? Should I get the traditional tan? Should I do black? Or should I do like a, a bicolour thing? But then I saw silver and I saw another blogger buy it and I was like yep, yeah, silver it is. And the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about with this bag is that it's too trendy but I've loved it since the first time it came out and I've just been waiting for the right one to come along in my life so it isn't trendy if you love it if you're gonna wear it and you know you're gonna wear it then go for it now I was so lucky with this I managed to get this on the net -a -porte sale or net -a -porte, however you say it sale and I got it for under 
a thousand Australian dollars. So that's amazing because I've seen this bag retail for a lot more than that. And I know that because it's not like a Chanel or a Louis Vuitton that I wouldn't want to purchase three two thousand odd dollars, three thousand odd dollars for a bag that's not like at that level. So this is just perfect and I got it for the right price at the right time. So yeah. Now it is also a throwback to the 90s with its short shoulder strap and I think I'm going to wear this clutch. I'm going to actually take off the, the strap and I'll put my own strap, even potentially put the Dior one on. I've got a few other bag straps. I've got a Vuitton, Louis Vuitton one that I love. So I might actually interchange the straps and then even that I've got a chain that you can actually use as well. So I'm ready to wear this pretty much tonight when I go out with my friends. So yes, awesome. Okay, so that's all my bags done. That was a fair bit to get through in itself. The next thing I wanted to talk about was kind of beauty products and go from there. So the first thing I wanted to mention, where did I put it? I might have put it in here, I don't even know. Here we go. It was a couple of lip products that I'm loving at the moment. So I'm loving, sorry guys. I'm loving a kind of a 90s, 80s, more 90s throwback to a very sheer lip gloss with a bit of a hint of colour. I'm wearing it today, but I'm loving the MAC Cream Sheen Glass. It's like a lip, the lip gloss product and it's actually a very, very light gloss, but it's not sticky, if that makes sense. I hate lip glosses that are sticky, so this is absolutely amazing. And the colour tint is perfect. There is colour but it's not like a matte lipstick, so please, please check this out. This is such a beautiful um, lip product. I think mine came in in like a pack, so, and this was a gift for me, so it's actually in a mini, I think. I don't know, I haven't seen the full size one, so I'm assuming it is because it's quite small, but it's perfect for an everyday lip product. And what I've layered on the top today is actually this, which is the Mecca Max Hollow Glam Lip Effects. So it gives it a holographic lip look that is apparently in at the moment and there's a, another one that's more glittery but this is the holographic one and I can't see if you can see but I'll swatch it and it just changes in the light so I'm not sure if you can see that so it's just like an amazing um, holographic look that's super in at the moment in makeup and beauty so I'm totally digging it and it just changes when the light hits it slightly different it gives a more pink or more silvery tone to it so Love, love, love that. I think it's really cheap and affordable. It's like 20 bucks from Mecca. Okay, so that is my lip products. And two of them, are very, those two are very recent. One was a gift. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is sort of body products kind of things, but not really like makeup, makeup. So the first thing I wanna share with you is, um, they're both from the same brand, which is Herbivore Botanicals. One is the soaking salts. These ones are the ylang ylang and vanilla. So they're infused with essential oils and you put them in your bath and you soak in it. And they smell absolutely divine. They kind of, when you put it in hot water, they melt away and leave you with this oh, it's like a beautiful fragrance. I actually cheat, I don't have a bath every day, but I actually put them in the shower. I spray them put a little bit on the floor and then have my bath. I might have my bath, have my shower as per normal. So yeah, I'm loving, loving these. Um, yeah, it's just something to add something special to your bath, if you do have baths. Sorry. <coughs> or if you are um, like me and cheating a bit, you can put it in your shower. Okay, and it's, yeah, stunning. I love this product. The other one is still from Herbivore Botanicals, and this is the Rose Quartz Eliminating Body Oil. Now this is like, I would say a body moisturizer, but an oil version, and it's got a lot of sparkle in it. So I'm wearing it today, and what it does, it's an oil, so it absorbs into the skin really easily, then it leaves you with like a little, a fair bit of glitter everywhere. So the only problem is that you just got to wash your hands after use and make sure that you've cleaned off um, the glitter on your hand before you start your makeup or something or touching other things so um, but yeah I'm really happy with this and it smells beautiful the rose smell is lovely so I think I would really recommend the herbivore range of products I also got a clay mask and a soap 
I think I got this one a kit, like a, a rose kit, and they're absolutely stunning. Um, and I am in love with their Instagram account, so the way they shoot their um, posts for that makes everything look so beautiful. So I got sucked in, and that's why I bought the um, soaking salts and the body oil, as well as the pink clay mask as well. So a fair few things I bought from them, and it's not as cheap to get it into Australia. I found it was a little bit expensive once I shipped it into Australia, but they're official website which I will link all the details below does um, price in Australian dollars so you can tell exactly what you're going to be spending for these products yeah so check them out they're really cool so right now I'm wearing a citrine ring it's quite thick and big and a few others here these are from Ananda Souls which is a beautiful company based in Bali in Ubud and they make some amazing jewelry so like I'm all for jewelry and I like rings and things so the fact that um, this company is in Bali is even better and they do give back to the community so they have a philanthropic, is that how you say it? Um, part of their business so yes I'm in love with their stuff and the other one I wanted to mention is if I can turn it around is Masoma London which is this necklace here, the coin one and the evil eye bracelet I'm not sure if you can see that um, on camera very well but these are um, stunning, stunning pieces made for layering and their Instagram account is unbelievable as well. So I'm really easily sucked in with when they present images in a way that I can see myself wearing them. I'm a stacker of rings. I love stacking bracelets as you can see here. So I see this whole stacking thing as my thing. The company does it on their Instagram account. I'm like, yep, I'm in. When can I buy it? So. The fact that I got these, and I got these 25% off on in the Black Friday sales. So yeah, it's it was quite worth it in the end to get it. And I wish I had got more, and I think I wanted more, but they had sold out of everything that I wanted. And because I love the evil eye symbol, and I love what it means, so I wanted like a ring and another necklace, but they had all sold out of everything, so I only ended up getting the two pieces, so which is cool. But it's, you know, maybe next time when they have another sale. Fingers crossed. The only other products I wanted to mention to you today is makeup. So there are a few products that I've been loving at the moment and I've been religiously using. So the first are these two. Ooh, if I can pick it up and not drop everything everywhere. And that's the Too Faced Hangover Primer. This is amazing and it's infused with coconut. It smells great. And I've been using this every day since I got it. I'm running low so I might need to pick up a new one in the next couple days. I'm here for two more weeks so I would prefer to get it here and then bring it to Bali. Might even pick up two just to have a spare in case. I don't ever want to run out of this. This is my favorite primer of all time. I was always in between primers and I said that I liked the Urban Decay one when I sampled it and I liked the Laura Mercier one but this one I think is better. I don't know why. It just makes my skin feel fresh and I don't feel like I need to put as much moisturizer on before I prime with this one so that's great. The only other one I wanted to mention for like my more everyday routine is the It Cosmetics CC Illumination Cream. This is unbelievable stuff. Like it can be a concealer, it can be a foundation, and it's got the perfect coverage. I thought CC creams were actually going to be quite light, um, and I know it's color correcting, so I don't really need color correcting for me at, just at this stage of my life. But I find this to be amazing, easy to apply blends out well and yes I'm loving this and it also comes I think in the Sephora store in mini versions like travel size ones of these so that's perfect for your gym bag or if you travel a lot you can carry the mini one around instead of the full size one it's not that big anyways but you know some people just like mini ones like I do I like minis and everything so I can um, pack my makeup bag full of more things than I actually need um, this is the illumination one I think there's a more matte one less um, dewy finish so but I like a dewy finish for myself personally so this is the pink one I think the non-illumination one is like a more white silver packaging so yeah please check this out it's amazing cool so that's those two beauty products that I am using all the time the other one I wanted to mention was the ordinary color serum foundation um, for the price point this is unbelievable I love love 
this, the ordinary products anyways. Their skincare is amazing. I've been using it religiously for the last six months. But the foundation, I think, is really worth the price point. And the serum one, I think I like better than the full coverage one. I think it's a bit lighter. And I think, for me personally, where I'm in a hot, humid country, it is better for my skin to have less full coverage. And yes, it's buildable and it's liquidy as you can probably hear. I hope you can hear that. Um, I'm two colors. I'm 2.1 P and 2.1 yellow um, when I mix them together. And because they're affordable, I'm still paying less than I would pay for a full thing of foundation from another brand. So yeah, I think like 12.90 Australian dollars each. Not bad. The only other product in the makeup I wanted to mention was the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. I think it's like the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation is the full name. But I am unbelievably blown away by the whole Fenty Beauty range. I didn't think I would like it, but I got sucked into the hype when I saw the range of colors she had for every skin tone out there. And all their highlightings and they're these matchsticks for contouring and they're, they're magnetic and they stick all together. And I first didn't like those contouring sticks, uh, but I have learned to fall in love with when I applied it correctly. I think I was applying it incorrectly a little bit and I wasn't blending it out. I used a brush to blend out and then I used a beauty blender to blend out and I found that a certain brush, for me, blended it out much better. But I'm not talking about the, those contour sticks because I don't contour every day, so I think I wouldn't use it. say it would be an absolute favourite of mine, but I say the Fenty Beauty Foundation, on the other hand, I can see this being something that you can use every day, and the range of colours, as I said before, is unbelievable, so every skin tone has something that can match them, and I just was very, very impressed by Rihanna and her team when they set this and created this. I was going to film myself using this for the first time, but I was a bit late to the party again, so I only got my products after like the first two weeks of the launch, and there was every beauty blogger had put a video out about it, and I was like, well, I didn't think it would be exciting for people to watch when I had already been two weeks late to the party, um, me posting a video about these products. But if you do want me to review Fenty Beauty and use all her products, I'm happy to do it, a full makeup face. I can use all the products. I don't have a primer yet because I'm too happy with the Too Faced one. And the only other thing I have is her highlighter, that super gold one that she wears in her ad campaign for it. That's bang on. That highlighter is freaking blinding. I've worn it to stores before like, are you wearing the Rihanna highlighter? I'm like, yes I am. And I bought another one in a more like rose goldy tone and that's not as bright but it's more, a little bit toned down, and I've got lip products from her. I got the perfect lipstick from her, the perfect red lipstick, sorry. And I've been gifted a few products of her lip range. I think it's the new matte lipstick set she's doing. And one of them's like a kind of ready, glittery, subtle, it's not too full on, um, lip product. And then the other one is a little bit more full on it, and it's like this light purpley blue color. It's like. I don't know how to describe it, but I have to wear it for you on camera to show you because it is as well. So like the highlighter and the lipsticks, the matte lipsticks she's come out with are really, you know, on point. And just this is really, really good. And it is affordable as well. So you're paying, I think, under 50 bucks for a, a foundation that is really, really good for its price point. And yeah, and it's a celebrity range, which is kind of unheard of. I, tend to move away from celebrity ranges because I think, you know, it's hype. And I, I might love that person, I might love Rihanna, but like, is she going to be successful at bringing out a foundation or a makeup one? I don't know. But she's turned out to be actually really, really successful at it, so I'm really happy that I ended up picking this one up. So yeah, those are my 2017 favourite products. There are, of course, a lot more than this video would be like two hours long and you would just hear me sitting and sitting here talking about everything that I love about certain products and that would just be boring. Um, I just wanted to say thank you guys for um, listening in and watching my videos. Last year I know I started my channel kind of on a whim after I moved to Bali and then I decided that I wanted to continue on doing it because it was kind of fun for me and something different and now I really want to be more regular with videos. As I said, I've 
before I am in between Melbourne and Bali and I like to travel obviously between that and yeah we'll go from there and hopefully um, you'll see a lot more of me on camera. If you haven't already as I said earlier subscribe below and I'll see you next time. Bye!